Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar. We'll be starting in just a couple of minutes. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. We'll literally be starting in just one moment. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, What's New in Business Central Wave 1? My name is Danusha Jolliffe. I'm the Marketing and Customer Services Director here at T-Vision. Um, I will be looking after the webinar. I will be monitoring the chats and the questions. So if you do have any, please do pop them in the chat box or in the question box, and I'll be asking my colleague Ian as we go along. As always, at the end of the webinar, the recording will be sent out. It will also be available on the website. We've had a record number of people register for today's webinar, and there's an awful lot of information coming up. Ian, over to you. Wow, that was quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Um, let me just advance the slide. How's that? Yeah, perfect. Great stuff. So, as um, Denisha was saying, there is quite a lot in this release. Um, so, I'm going to go through it rather quickly. Um, and this time, Microsoft have been very nice to everybody who's working in operations, working with inventory, warehousing, things like that. There's some nice changes for you guys, as well as for finance. So, let me open up my demo environment. Okay, so I am on the latest release. This is the um, preview version, so I can show you what's going on. As I said, Microsoft have done quite a few nice things for the guys in um, warehousing and operations. And let me just show you some of the things that have been added. So if I, for instance, went and looked at an item journal, and I prepared an item journal earlier today. So I've got an item journal here. I put 18 lines on this journal. I would like you to imagine I'd put uh, 180 lines on here. It's, it's taken me the best part of the entire morning to prepare this journal. And now I want to post it. But there have been problems in the past and the guys in finance have been complaining about costs not pulling through correctly. Unfortunately, with their VC as it stands, I post this journal and then I find out what happens. One of the new features that has been added, we now have a preview posting button. So that's going to tell me exactly what will be posted before it actually posts. And if I click this preview posting button, I should get an error message. Yep, oh, the document number is wrong. So I started preparing this journal. I had the correct document number, but now someone else has posted a journal. I'm going to have to renumber every line. I've got 180 lines. That's a mission. I can always export this to Excel and do the update in Excel, which is a little bit easier, but it's still work that I'll rather not be doing. 
there is a new option under actions functions renumber document numbers that's going to go and look at my number series and it's going to update these document numbers to the correct document number for post just tells me it's going to take a few seconds it's updated the document numbers i didn't have to type them by hand it's a small little change but anybody who's uh, been in that situation they will know that that's a huge time saver right now i just want to check this journal before i post it so i can click this preview posting button and now it's going to show me exactly what will be posted and it's going to post 18 lines into my item ledger entries 34 lines into my general ledger and immediately something rings in my head if there's 18 lines here there should be 36 lines there there should be two lines for each one of these items an in and an out something's missing i know there's a problem before i post i can have a look at these item ledger entries uh, i can have a quick browse through all the items seem to be there what's what's missing on here oh there's a problem no costs have come through on this line i've made a mistake on my journal i can go back i can fix my mistake before i actually post the document so this is the line yep i forgot to put in the the costs um let's make those two pounds each now if i go and do my preview posting again before i actually post let me double check and again it's gone through all the lines ah now it's posting 36 entries in the general ledger and i can go and i can double check those items all of those costs they're in there i'm happy i can now post this journal and i'm confident that what i'm doing is correct and nobody from finance is going to come and shout at me in two weeks time when they say oh the costing's gone wrong and trace back to this journal so again that preview posting it's not you know earth shattering the guys in the finance have had this for years but for the guys in operations this can be a godsend particularly if you're at a company where costing is a big issue and there have been problems with journals affecting costing in the past um what we also have um are the ability to post multiple transfer orders at the same time so you can imagine a situation you're working in a busy warehouse or a stock room or a storeroom and you have a lot of transfer orders everybody's busy they're doing their work and at the end of the day you come and you post all of these documents now i've only got four documents here but imagine you know busy warehouse maybe you've got a hundred documents you would have to go to each one post ship next one post ship next one post ship really that's a waste of your time what we now have on the posting option up here as well as having preview posting on transfer orders. So I can see exactly what this is going to do in the general ledger, on my item ledgers, in my value entries. We also have a post batch option. So I can click on this and I can fill in some filters and say, which ones do I want to post? Or I can select the ones that I want to post and just these two, I think. And if I go to that post batch, it will fill in the filters for me. So it saves me the hassle of having to figure out what filter goes here. I could have selected all the ones that were released or all the ones that from the East warehouse to the West warehouse. I can put in lots of filters to choose and then I can click OK and ship. And that will do the shipping. I can do the same thing, OK and receive if I'm on the receiving end. So again, imagine you've got a hundred of these, you don't have to do a hundred single transactions. You can do it all in bulk. A great time saver, and I really like that. Um, the next thing, this last transfer order, I'm just gonna open it up and have a look at it. Oopsie, I didn't want to press that. So within this um, transfer order, you can see it was for two desks. I've already shipped two of the desks. Now, the guy at the West Warehouse, he phones me up and he says he's not going to receive this because there's only one desk on the truck. I have a look around and sure enough, by the back door, there's another desk standing there that forgot to load it on the truck. 
In the past, you would have had to carry that transaction all the way through to the end. The guy on the other side would have had to receive the stock and then do a transfer order back, or we would both go physical inventory journals or item journals to correct our inventory. New feature, which is really nice. If I go and look for, so a quick search, and I look for that posted transfer shipment. And I just happen to know that it is this top one here. I now, if I select this line, I get the option to undo the shipment. It will ask me to confirm whether I want to undo that shipment and now it's undoing the shipment. So I didn't have to carry this transaction all the way through to the end. And if I come back to my transfer orders, I will now see I still have two units to ship. I haven't shipped anything. So I could change this quantity to one or I could send the other desk and then post the shipment but I can sort it out before it comes a problem and before people have to start doing extra work. Now that preview posting functionality that I showed you, that is available on all item journals, your physical inventory journals, um, reclassification journals, revaluation journals. And the good, good news, that's for the simple inventory. If you're doing the advanced inventory, you're using warehousing, you're doing picks, movements, cutaways, you've also got that preview posting available on your warehouse documents as well. So you can see what's going to happen in advance, double check that everything's correct, make sure that you don't make mistakes. Um, another nice feature here on the transfer orders. In the past, if I wanted to transfer multiple items, I would go line by line by line, I would choose the items that I want to add. New functionality that's been added, you can pick multiple items. Highlight the six or seven items. When you say okay, it will populate all six or seven lines and you just need to put in your quantities. So again, a great time-saving change that's been made. On the warehousing, when you're creating your um, pick instructions, your movement instructions, etc new filters have been added so you've got more filters which just makes it easier for you to populate those documents saves you time and again it's actually i'm, I'm take my hat off to microsoft that they've actually paid attention <laughs> they're doing stuff that's not just finance this time it's great stuff final thing to mention on the operation side the ability within warehousing now you can instead of just shipping or receiving items you can ship and receive non-inventory things such as freight costs etc you can do that from the warehouse documents it saves having to go and create a separate document and link the two together you can do it all in one place um, and all of this functionality is going to be available um, pretty much next month when the wave goes live so if you if you're Running a warehouse, if you're using inventory, it's well worth having a look at this. Having a look at your processes, maybe you can improve things, save time, cut down mistakes. It's very exciting. Ian? Yep. Uh, you having just said that, there was a question that came in. Someone was asking when the wave is happening, um, so I can pick up on that. So an email will have come out from Debbie Gibbs, um, and that would have been sent to the super user or the IT person within your organisation. Um, talking about exactly what Ian just said about testing those uh, processes. And obviously, as this is a highlights webinar, there is an awful lot more um, that is available. And this all came out of a session with the T-Vision team about what we felt would be the highlights that would be most relevant to you as a client. Um, we do have a couple of blogs on this, and I'll also share the link for the Microsoft Learn uh, document. Um, is there anything else to add on that in terms of timings or anything like that, Ian? Um... Not a lot. As I said, this inventory stuff is going to be yeah. live as the wave goes live. Yeah. Finance guys, 
not so fantastic for you this time. <laughs> there is some nice stuff, but it's not all going live immediately with the wave. It's going to come out in drips and drabs after the wave. But I'll, I'll talk through those in the next okay. session. All right, yep. So that was the finance stuff. As I say, each one of these elements by itself, it's not a big deal. But the fact that Microsoft's put these all together, it can make a big difference um, for guys in warehouses, guys looking at the inventory, costing, etc. Um, now, moving on, let's talk about finance. So some of these things I can't show to you because they're not available yet. Um, Non-deductible VAT. So imagine you're buying a company car for a sales director. There's 20% VAT on that, but you can only claim back 10% when you're submitting your VAT return. And people have come up with creative ways of recording that transaction using journals, using a 10% VAT posting group, and other little tricks. This new functionality, you're going to be able to record non-recoverable VAT. And it's the entire transaction. You can say the VAT is non-recoverable, or you could say only 50% of the VAT on this transaction is recoverable. So those situations where you need to record the VAT because you owe the money to somebody, but you can't claim it on your VAT return, that's now catered for in the base application. Um, for anybody who's doing business in Europe, you've got offices in Europe, there's a document transfer standard, SAF-T, which a lot of governments in Europe now are saying that's how they want to receive files from you. In Portugal, that's compulsory that you use that format. France are making it compulsory. Germany, they started to use it and it's kind of becoming a standard, even though it's not legislated. That functionality is now also available to export an SAF-T compliant file for governments. And that's going to be coming out, um, Microsoft said the preview will be in May, so it's going to be May or June. That's going to be available along with the non-deductible VAT. End of month, adjusting exchange rates. And we get quite a few calls on the help desk where people um, sometimes question this or struggle with this. There are some new options that have been added for that. One of them is when you run the procedure, you're going to get a preview posting button. It's going to show you before you actually post it what it's going to do to your GL accounts. So you can check you're expecting about a £4,000 adjustment. If the preview shows you it's £50,000, you know something's wrong. <laughs> you can go back and you can fix it before you post it and then have to post a correction and then have to stand in front of the finance director explaining why didn't you do it right the first time. You can get it right the first time. You also have the option on those adjust currencies. You can post in, back, in bulk or in detail. So for each line, do you want to post a separate adjustment or do you just want to add them all up and post one big adjustment? You have that option now of doing it either way, whatever makes sense for you, whatever makes sense for your reporting and analysis needs. Again, that's going to be available sometime by September. Microsoft aren't exactly saying when. There's also the possibility, if you go and look at your vendor posting setup or your um, customer posting setup, let's just have a quick look at vendor posting setup. You will notice when you look in there, oh, what did I type wrong? Vendor posting groups, sorry, vendor posting groups. It tells you which GL account is going to be used as your payables account, your discount accounts, etc. Microsoft are going to give you the option on every single sales and purchase document, the ability to override that GL account if it's not quite the right one for this transaction. So if you had different ones for your EU, your foreign, your domestic, you bought something from someone who's always EU, but they happen to be able to ship it from a a UK warehouse, you'd be able to, on that transaction, change the GL account to match that it's a domestic purchase or a domestic sale, which is nice. It saves you going back, changing a customer, changing a vendor, posting a transaction, going back, changing to what they should have been. It's just a nicer way of doing things. Again, that's going to be available sometime by September, not exactly sure when. And then the next one, 
And this one, I was really excited when I saw this, doesn't just apply to guys in finance, this applies to everybody in the business. There is a new type of account that is available, a statistical account. So within statistical accounts, this is where you can record numbers. So I've set up two examples here, one for my head count, my number of employees, and another one for my office space, the number of meters squared um, that my office have. And I can post numbers in here with dimensions. So my head count, if I look at this, I've currently got 70 employees at this company. I can see I had 30 people in the admin department, 10 in production, 23 in sales, another four joined production, another 14 joined the admin, 11 people left the admin department. So I have a head count per department. That's nice. I've got the same thing for my office space. And again, I've split my office space up by department, how much space is being used by each department, and as people move offices, etc., I can change that square meterage that's been used per department. Again, that's interesting, but the really nice thing, if you go to your account schedules, which have now been renamed as financial reports, that was, I think, uh, the end of last year, this change yeah. was made. I think it was the last one, yeah. And if I just open any one of these reports, um, I haven't built a report for you guys, I'm sorry. Um, but this report, if I go and I change my row definitions, so, you know, I'm tweaking this report or creating a new report, as well as getting posting accounts and formulas and bringing budgets, etc., I'm getting the option now I can bring numbers from those statistical accounts. So I could get income for my different categories with the headcount and I could do this per department and see what's my revenue per department, per division, per region, whatever dimensions I might want to put on there. And again, the same place if I'm doing, um, if I've got um, a shop and I've got shelves, how many meters of shelving for each of my departments, and I can do sales per meter of shelf and see which departments are performing well, which ones need more shelf space, which need less shelf space. Suddenly we can get this directly from the system instead of having to have separate spreadsheets, copying and pasting information and trying to do formulas to figure it out. We can have a built-in report that does this for us and it's part of our reporting pack at the end of every month. So these statistical accounts I think are going to become very useful if you have those, you know, sales per meter squared, sales per headcount, sales per office, whatever it might be. Those type of reports that you develop, the statistical accounts will probably be very useful for you. And then the last thing that I want to show to you, this one's it blew my mind when I saw it. I thought it was fantastic. Um, if I just go and have a look at um, any of my grid view type screens, if I look at my posted sales invoices, for example, and this is pretty much what the screen looks like now. I've got my columns, my rows, all my information. Looks a little bit like an Excel spreadsheet. Um, it would be nice if I could use this more like an Excel spreadsheet. So this is where you would need, when you're doing your testing, to go to a page called Feature Management. And I'm gonna turn on this new feature just so you can see the difference. So the default is switched off? Default, it is switched off. It's gonna be switched on, as you can see, by quarter four in 2023. It's this line here, Analysis Mode. And I'm gonna click the button to try it out. So it's opening a new page for me to have a look at this. As I said, this is coming sometime by quarter four, and it's gonna be enabled for everyone. And now in this new little test environment that I have, if I have a look at my posted sales invoices again, you'll notice a slight change to the screen. While I've still got my rows and columns, I now have a button up top here that says analyze. So this is just a list of all my posted sales invoices with the dates, with the customer. 
if I turn on analyze, my view shifts and suddenly it starts looking like a pivot table in Excel. Summarized by month, within each month, summarized by customer, how many documents there are, what's the total, I can drill down, I can actually see those documents. And this is fully customizable. So by default, it's by date. But over on the side, I can come, I can look at my columns and that's where it's choosen, chosen by month, by name. I could choose just to do it by name instead of by month, by name. I can apply filters just as I would have done on my normal screen so that I'm only seeing my domestic customers or my export customers, etc. So pretty much all of those month end reports that you have to do, you can do them live on the system. We anticipate that by quarter four, they're going to have the export to Excel button here. Um, it's an assumption that we've made. I'm not making as a promise, but we expect that to happen as well. And quite apart from all of this, you get the ability to turn on pivot mode, which just gives you more options on how you can look at this screen instead of just looking at this um, boring old screen. I'll have to go back one screen. Oh, or did I leave it there? No. Get back to that boring screen. Yeah, instead of looking at this boring old screen, which is still useful, you now have this much more dynamic screen where you can pivot your daughter, you can slice it, you can dice it, you can look at a month, you can look at a customer group, see the totals, see the details, sort them in any order that you want. I think this is mind blowing for the guys who are doing business analysts work um, and preparing month end reports. It's probably going to be a godsend for you guys. There are quite a few more things which I haven't even had time to touch on. Um, some of the things, there are new localizations. If you're doing business in Africa, you've got an African office. There's localizations now for just about every African country as well as smaller countries such as Liechtenstein, San Marino, etc. if you happen to have offices there. On all of the list pages now, more columns have become available. So stuff that's been hidden from you in the past, it's now you're able to put it on the screen and see what's going on. The um, intercompany postings, they've been tweaked. Um, they're gonna get much better. Again, that's by September, that's going to go, go live. Um, and uh, there's an intercompany synchronization that's coming. We're gonna test that, that's where you can change the GL um, short of accounts in one company and mirror that change in another company, which sounds very exciting. We're looking forward to testing that one out. And then the, the last one that I want to show you, um, anybody who's doing daughter capture work, it's much quicker if you just work on the keyboard rather than using your mouse to navigate around and then back to the keyboard, back to the mouse. So for instance, I'm using my mouse, Maybe I want to go to sales, I want to get to the sales invoices, when I get to sales invoices, I want to have a look inside one of them, see what's going on. Without using my mouse, if I press Alt, it shows me shortcut keys that I can press to get there, and I can start remembering these shortcut keys. So to get to my sales documents, J then S, within my sales documents, A gets me to the um, invoices. I have a list of invoices. I want to look at the third one down. So it's down arrow, down arrow, press enter. I'm not using my mouse to navigate here. And while I'm on this screen, I want to see the statistics for this order when it finally opens. Again, I can press Alt. I can press I for invoice and S for statistics. I can look at the statistics. Yep, I'm happy with all of that. Escape, escape. Am I sure I want to exit? Tab, yes, I press enter. Escape, I'm back to my home screen. You can do everything now without touching your mouse. For a lot of us, we'd like to use our mouse. Guys who are capturing orders, um, doing lots of transactions, keeping your fingers on the keyboard, they can just speed up your work so much. So well worth looking at that, seeing those shortcuts.
Um, I don't have much time left, guys. Very briefly, a lot of these changes happen because people in the user community, people like you, suggest yeah. them to Microsoft. Yeah. If you think of an idea that you would like to see in a future release from within Business Central, click on the little um, question mark, help and support, and you get an option here, give feedback. You can follow this link, you can type in. It would be really nice if there was a button that did this on that screen. And then you can ask your friends, send them the link, say vote for this. The more votes it get, Microsoft more likely to make that change for you. So if you think of something that's a good idea, let Microsoft know. Um, they said that a lot of these changes they made this time came from feedback from the user community, people who pressed that button and made suggestions. So they do listen and it's well worth giving your suggestion there. That's all I've got time for. Um, but if you do have any questions, Danusha will tell you how to get in touch. I could just ask you just to go to that next slide, just to finish off. So uh, I appreciate their long links, um, but the two blogs there are on the T-Vision website, and they also would have been included in recent uh, newsletters. And each of those blogs also points back to that really hefty Microsoft Learn section. So whilst Ian has covered the majority of the highlights, and again, this was all content that we felt as a team would be really useful to clients, um, it will all be in there. Um, so thank you so much everyone for attending today's session. We will also be running a What's New in Bevica session next week for our Bevica clients, for our drinks industry clients. Um, so thank you so much everyone for joining us today, Ian for presenting. The recording will be sent out in due course and will also be available on the website and also sent out in a newsletter in the next month or two. Thank you so much everyone. Cheers guys. Bye-bye.